All great wildlife photographs share a common characteristic. And in this video, I will explain what that characteristic is and how you can use it to create better looking photographs. Be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a bonus tip that helped me capture this dramatic photograph. If you're looking at your photographs and wondering why they don't look as good as other images, the answer may lie in the quality of the light. Light plays a crucial role in photography and understanding how to use it is one of the key ingredients to being successful in photography. Let's compare two photographs. Do you see why the photo on the right is more appealing than the one on the left? Although the subjects are very similar, the photographs are vastly different. How about this comparison? While the subject matter is very similar, the quality of the light sets them apart and creates more depth and appeal in the photo. So how can we use light to improve our photographs? In wildlife photography, it's not always possible to change your position. So we need to make the most of the light we are given. However, if you can change your position, it's vitally important to understand how light can affect your photographs. Depending on the time of the day and weather conditions, wildlife photographers encounter various types of lighting. The trick is knowing how to analyze the light and know how to select the desired angle or perspective to make the most of the light and the results you want to achieve. Light has three distinct characteristics, the type of light, the direction, and the color temperature. Let's look at these characteristics in depth and find out how we can utilize them to create better photographs. Golden light occurs during the first hour of the sunrise and the last hour before sunset. Because the sun is low on the horizon, the light is softer and warmer, creating weaker shadow contrast. Golden light is favored by photographers and is my favorite time of the day for wildlife photography. So make sure to get up before sunrise and stay out late until the sun is set. Animals are generally more active during these cooler times of the day, so you'll have better opportunities to capture some good action during golden light. When the light source is coming from behind a subject, we call it backlight. This light source can create incredibly dramatic photographs, adding a lot of depth and mood, especially when there is a lot of atmosphere or dust in the air. It can be tricky to expose a photograph correctly when shooting into strong backlight, so I usually underexpose by a stop, making sure to capture detail in the brightest highlights. If you can include the sun or an open horizon in your photograph, it can create a wonderful opportunity to create silhouettes. Again, be sure to expose accordingly so as to not lose detail in the brightest areas of the scene. When the light comes from the side of a subject, we call it side lighting. This form of light enhances textures and features on a subject very well. Side light can create shadows across a subject which helps create natural contrast and adds depth to a photograph. When using side lighting, try to capture some light on the face of your subject, especially on the eye. Adding a small glint of light in the eyes helps add life to the subject and increases the emotional connection with those viewing your photo. A less flattering form of lighting is front lighting. When the sun is directly in front of your subject, we call this front light. This type of light generally illuminates the entire subject evenly and can sometimes appear a bit flat, lacking depth and contrast. However, I do like front light when the sun is very low on the horizon. Nevertheless, I always try to move and achieve side or back lighting if possible. Once the sun rises higher into the sky, we lose a lot of color in the light, and at times this can lead to undesirable results. Depending on weather conditions and your location, you'll encounter three main types of light during the middle of the day. When the sun is high in the sky, the light can be very harsh. Strong shadows are created and the light lacks color. Although this light is less than desirable, it can create some good opportunities for monochrome photography. Processing photos with less contrast and made a bit darker can often lead to results that don't look like they were captured in the middle of the day. Even when the light is harsh, I still like to capture photos, but these often don't result in anything amazing. If you encounter cloud during the middle of the day, the light becomes diffused. Soft, diffused light reduces harsh shadows and allows you to capture evenly illuminated photographs all day long. This diffused light does lack color when compared to golden light, but the color can be tweaked in post-processing afterwards, bringing back life to the photo. When sunlight filters through a tree or vegetation, the light becomes dappled, creating patches of light and shadow. This can be used to create a different dimension to a photograph, as long as the light doesn't create too much contrast, where parts of the scene are too bright or too dark. Reducing some contrast in post-processing afterwards can yield good results. Using supplementary artificial light is a good idea when natural light levels are low. 
Artificial light could come from LED panels, a spotlight or a flash. Use supplementary light in the same way as you would natural light. Experiment with light angles such as backlighting or side lighting in the same way you would use natural backlight or side light. I tend to stay away from front lighting when using artificial light as this can create very flat results. In this example we have a small amount of ambient light available in the sky. I used LED lights placed on the left and right to illuminate the animals beautifully. In this example I exposed for the red sunset sky in the background and used a flash to illuminate the scene. A quick word about shutter speeds and different lighting conditions. When the intensity of light is low during the early morning or late afternoon, raise up your ISO or open up the aperture on your lens to obtain a quick enough shutter speed for your subject or scene. When the light is stronger, drop down the ISO and adjust your shutter speed accordingly. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel for more wildlife photography content like this. As promised, here's my bonus tip. Create separation between your subject and background by using light and shadow. This technique is very effective in creating natural and dramatic contrast. Although these moments can be fleeting, always keep an eye out for opportunities to use this technique. If possible, change your position to offset your sunlit subject with a background that is in shadow. In this example, the sun had just risen and the color of the light was perfectly golden. I exposed for the brightest parts of the lion's fur, which rendered a very dark background and created a dramatic result. There are many other ways to improve your photographs, so check out this video next where I share seven simple tips for better wildlife photography.